and unprepared. You'll come to the judgment laden with sins, weary, heavy laden, having lived a life of disgust and hatred towards God. You will come to the judgment unprepared, having lived a life of vanity, the things of this world pleasing to your eyes. And God is calling out to you today through us, why will ye die, saith the Lord. So I want to ask you today, why will ye die in your sins and forsake the Savior who died for them? My friends, we are here with a message of love. We are, met, we are here with a message as ambassadors of God Himself, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to plead with you, to, get, to take into account, to consider your life, to consider your ways, to consider the direction of your life. Jesus says, broad, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Broad is the way. This is the broad way to destruction today here in St. Louis. Yep. They've paved Amen. the way for you. They've made it as shiny as they could. They've paved the way for you on this broad road. And you're laughing. And you're reveling in your pride. And your debauchery. And your wickedness. God is not pleased with you today. He's pleading with you through us, why will ye die in your sins? You don't have to. No, you don't have to die in your sins. You can repent and forsake them. In fact, God says, cast away from you. My friends, what will you do with a piece of garbage? You'll cast it away from you. You won't have anything to do with a stinky piece of garbage. And God is saying to do the same with sin. Sin will destroy you in hell. Sin will destroy you in this life. Cast away from you all your transgressions. Whereby ye have transgressed God's law. Cast away from you these transgressions. And make you a new heart. Praise the Lord. God says, make you a new heart. Make you a new spirit. In other words, repent. It's as simple as that. Guys, we're here with a message of urgency. Of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Amen. He can take away yours. You just got to be willing to turn around. You're on a broad road. You're headed to destruction. Turn around. It's as simple as that. Turn around and repent. Don't go in there. Don't go the way you're going. Don't go the way you're going. You know, your direction is wrong. You're going the wrong way. We have the map right here. We have the way right here. Your heart is wrong. You have a bad heart. My friends, the good news of Jesus Christ won't mean anything to you unless you face the bad news. That you have a bad heart and a bad record before God. How will you erase your record before you face God on Judgment Day. You can't erase it with any good works. You can't erase it with any uh, work that you have done. It's only by repentance and faith on the blood of Jesus Christ, the crucified one, the Lamb of God. Why will ye die, God asks. As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way live. and live. Amen. Turn, God says. 
Turn ye, God says, from your wicked ways. My friend, your life right now might be enjoyable for a season. You might laugh and have fun. But if you're honest with yourself, how comfortable are you in your relationship? How, how sturdy, how faithful is your partner to you? He might, he might love you today or say he loves you today, but, but turn away to another tomorrow. There's great unfaithfulness in this homosexual community. Great unfaithfulness. But God is faithful, and he will in no wise cast you out. If you come to him on your knees, if you come and bow your heart before God, and repent and say, I am a sinner, cleanse me, for why will ye die in your sins, saith God. God hath no pleasure in the death of the wicked, the sinner, but he has pleasure in that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your wicked ways, for why will ye die, saith the Lord. Why will ye die, lady? Why will ye die in sin? Turn from sin. Turn from drunkenness. Turn from sexual immorality. This defiles you. This defiles the man. Jesus says, what comes out of your heart defiles you. Evil thoughts, adultery, drunkenness, sexual immorality, homosexuality, these defile a man. Gluttony, lies, a proud heart, these defile you, and by which you are defiled and are not right before God today. If God were to come now and demand of you an accounting for your life, what would ye say to the living God? You don't need proof. You don't need evidence there is a God. You know in your heart of hearts that there is a God. Amen. Look at the sky. Listen to the thunder. Amen. See the lightning streak across the sky during a storm. See the great vast universe. He's created the stars, the sun and moon. Do you make the sun come up every day? Do you make the stars shine at night? No, it is the living God who created all things. And for his pleasure they were created. But you are not created for immorality. Oh no. Contrary to what you believe today, you are not created for this. You are not created to go your own way. You are not created to live your life the way you please. You are not created to lie to your neighbor, to steal from him things or her or things that are not yours. You were not created. You were created in the image of God. And by sin you have polluted. You have defiled yourself. And by your sins ye are separated from God. You are separated. There's a great distance between you and God. And we are here as messengers of Christ Jesus. Come back. Come back to the Lord. Come back be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Why will ye die, saith the Lord? The Bible says, all they that hate me love death. All they that hate the Lord love death. If you're honest with yourself, sin is an outright hatred of God. In your sinful, rebellious ways, you are blowing smoke, your rebellious smoke in the nostrils of God. You are a God-hater and must be reconciled to God through the love of His Son on a cross. Not the love that you have on these wicked things you're doing today. That's not love. That's not love. You want to know what love is? Consider the ways of God to plead with you, to turn you from your sin, to send someone like me who was once dead in sin, going my own way down a broad road. He convicted my heart. He called me a sinner in His love. 
He counted all the ways I sinned against him. And I said, oh God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He, he had mercy on me. God had mercy on me. You want evidence for God? Come talk to me. God saved me. God touched me. God redeemed me. God made me holy through His Spirit. God washed me clean in His blood. He can do that too. But except ye repent, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish in your sins. Repent of your sins, God says. The Bible says, He that sinneth against me longeth his own soul. God says, He that sinneth against me longeth his own soul. And all they that hate me love death. My friends, this nation is a nation given unto death. This is a nation that murders its own babies in the womb. It's called abortion. That's not love. That's not liberty. It's wicked. This is a nation that kills its own people in the womb, which should be the most precious, safe place in all the world, has now become a butcher shop. Planned Parenthood all across this nation, murdering God's image bearers, murdering God's babies, whom He has created, whom He has conceived. My friends, this is a wicked abomination before God. This is, this is why blood runs through our streets and why men love death, and why men hate Paul. This is why God has not had mercy. God has shown His mercy in times past for this nation. God has poured out His grace on you. You sing it in your song. You sing it in your songs. God's grace has been poured out on this nation. And now God can dwell amongst this nation. America, you have defiled yourself. You have heaped up wickedness upon wickedness and you're blowing your smoke in the face of God. This is a generation that is clean in their own eyes but is not washed from their iniquities. This is a nation that is wicked before God and he sends nobodies like me to come and say repent if you only would turn from your sin. If you only would confess that you're a sinner. If you only would accept the fact that you are a sinner before God and turn from it and cast it away as a filthy thing you will be saved cast it away from you I don't want you to stand before God a sinner on judgment day in that day if you stand before God a sinner having not been born again saved by the blood of Christ Sad. God will Children. cast you away he will say away with you, ye worker of iniquity. My friend, this is a serious message for a serious time. The judge is at the door, even at the threshold. He is coming again to thresh the wicked in his winepress. He has come to judge the world in righteousness through his Son, whom he has ordained the Savior of all men. But the rejectors, the blasphemers, the mockers, the wicked, the adulterers, the fornicators, the blasphemers, they will stand before God. They will stand before God. He will cast you away. He will cast you far away. He is the judge of all the earth. The Bible says the wages, the wages of sin is death. The wages of a life lived in sin is death. I don't want that for you. The other part of that verse says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, the Lord. You see, Jesus Christ is Lord. You can't make Him Lord. No one can make Him Lord. God beat you to it. God beat me to it. He's Lord of heaven. Amen. He is Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Heaven and on earth, Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. No one can make him Lord. 
will either bow to him now in your life you have, or you'll be judged and damned by him in eternity. He's Lord. And as Lord, Amen. he can judge and he can save whomever he will. You must come to Jesus Christ, the Lord, yes. who is on a throne. You know why you hate him so much? It's because he won't get off the throne. You want it too bad with your rebellious words, your rebellious ways, your wickedness. You want to rule your own life. You want to rule the world if you could. Jesus won't have it. Of his kingdom there will be no end. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is king. Jesus Christ is Lord. He got that way. He got there by way of a bloody cross. Jesus became Lord through a bloody cross, laying his life down. Laying his life down. Spotless sacrifice. Jesus Christ. We're here to exalt Jesus Christ and to lift him up and to bear testimony to him alone. We're not here as proud men. We're not here as great men. We're here as nobodies who know the living God through Jesus Christ. And we cannot do but give testimony to King Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sure. If you want to go back to live, you got a battery power to go live. Do we unplug it or not? <laughs> uh, you, you can unplug it. So you have to flip that switch on, brother, and. Christ came that he could give you life That's right. and give it to you more abundantly. Amen. Not a lifestyle of sin, not a lifestyle of fornication, That's right. not a lifestyle of drunkenness, not a lifestyle of homosexuality, not a lifestyle of lying or thieving. But he came to set you free, and he said, I've came to set the captives free, and they're free indeed. He came to set you free, not keep you bound in sin. Come on. Not keep you bound in your homosexuality. People to say that they are Christians and they're homos, they're deceived. That's a good question. She said, can you look at me where is it? No, yeah. like, look at me in the same line. Okay. Where, where does it say in the Bible? Hey, I don't listen to young ladies. You don't listen to young ladies. No, because I'm a child of God. You're a child of God, so you don't listen. Yes, I'm a child of God. I don't listen to the counsel of the ungodly. Psalm 1-1. Jim, come on. That's right. Hey, let me go. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Okay, here. Are you going to read it? No, you'll read it. Okay. I love to read those words. Yes. Know you not the unrighteous shall not be effeminate. Okay, so explain to me what that means. The feminine is somebody that is male that acts like a woman. Mm -hmm. the feminine. The feminine. Are you sure feminine. Feminine. So if I, if yes. I, if I Google that? And nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Homosexuals. Mm -hmm. Alright, so if I Google that, that's what that's going to mean? That's what it means. And it says down here, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Yep. So king somebody that said that does, does these things is not going to enter the kingdom of God. Okay. How are you going to be here till the end of the? Sure, we'll be here. If you, have, okay. if you have questions, there's a young lady here. She can also help you. She, she can answer all your Bible questions. Yes, she can. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. Yes, these are good questions. We don't mind answering your questions. If you have a question, come up, and we'll go through the scriptures with you. 
were to give you the hope that's in us. Amen. That hope that Jesus Christ has given us. That hope that He get, has given us because He died on that bloody cross. Amen. He shed that blood. That's right. That sin offering for you and me. You know, and He's no respecter of a person. You can come to Christ because the foot of the cross is level. It's level at the foot of the cross. That means anybody can come to the foot of the cross and they can repent and That's be right. saved. That's right. They can repent, believe the gospel, and be saved. It's time that people in America give up their life of sin and come to the full knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because oh, Jesus yeah. came Good to see you, brother. He Good came to see you. Let me uh, check this off real quick. Here. As the Lamb of God to be slain. He was willingly, He willingly came to that cross. He willingly came and died on that cross for you and me. What's your name? That we could have this Good to meet you, Aaron. 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 Good to meet you. Good name. Of living for Him. Hallelujah. That's pleasing to Him. Have you guys pleasing to the Father. Got a good system. You guys are he doesn't be, uh, want us to live a life of sin. Well. Yeah. So, uh, as soon he as wants us to um, live a one life of, you of righteousness. There, um, start you preaching. The Bible's clear about that. Amen. What He says. First John, if you want to stand says, he who does righteous, either on this side, probably better, righteous, just is, stand right there and, and cut a line. He who does does righteous, brother Richard. Righteous. Yes, if we do righteousness, we're you're righteous. Gonna, you're probably going to have to because let us hold this side and probably have to go in. God the Father. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I and don't we know can even right. come because he sent the Holy Spirit to us, and we can cry, Abba, Father. We can ask anything in Jesus' name, and He said, hey, I'll do it. He'll answer our prayers. We can pray, and He'll answer them. I had a young lady that I was transporting, and she says, well, I can't get home every day because some things happen. And I said, well, let me pray about it. Let me pray. I prayed that day, and that day, that minute, that hour, everything was changed. And she got to go home at the time that she was supposed to go home. Because God honored my prayers. And He will honor your prayers. He'll honor your prayers only if you come to the foot of the cross. Only if you repent and believe the gospel. Amen. Amen. That's the only way you're going to come to Jesus Christ. You're not going to come to, with your pride. You're not coming to Jesus Christ with your pride. Thank you. You're spending already. That pride will find you out. That sin of pride will find you out. That pride is destruction to you people. That pride will destroy you. You have to come humble before God. The Bible says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, He will exalt you. Only God can exalt you. And yet, we hear this. There's that sign over there. Does that say pride? Yes. It says pride. Pride comes before destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. You will be destroyed because of pride. No wonder the homosexuality take that word, that pride. Because you know what? It destroys. It's destroyed. Pride destroys. But being humble before God, being humble. Before God will get you the kingdom. Being humble and broken before God. No one, every one of us deserve hell. That's right. Every one of us deserve hell. Until you get that in your heart, till you understand that what we've done in our life, we all deserve hell. When you figure that out, and you're able to humble yourself, and you're able to broke break yourself before God, say, Lord, 
I'm a dirty, wicked sinner in need for a Savior. Because He's the only Savior. No, nobody else can claim to be the Savior because He's spoken. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus set the standard. God set the standard for marriage. He said it as one man, one woman. Not one man, another man, or a woman, or a woman. He set the standard, one man and one female. I'm not afraid to speak that. You can come at my job. You can come at my career. Guess what? I gave up my career of teaching to come out here and preach this. Because I don't care about it. I don't care about no career. It's been dumb to me. It's, it's, about, it's dumb before me. But I can tell you that Jesus said, Go tell my people. Go preach to my people the good news. The good news is that Jesus died for your sins. Amen. That you could have a life pleasing to Him, but you have to give up these sins. You can't live in a life of sin and serve Jesus Christ too. You can't be a servant to sin and a servant to righteousness or a servant to Jesus. You have to be a servant to Jesus Christ's righteousness. Right, amen. You can be righteous in Jesus. Amen. That's good. He can make you That's good. righteous. Jesus loves you enough that He requires justice. That's right. That justice is all sinners are going to hell. That's His justice. His justice is that those that come to Jesus Christ that died on that cross that bloody cross that they will have eternal life when they believe the gospel Come on. That's right, and man. repent and believe the gospel that's your only hope your only hope is in Jesus Christ your hope isn't Buddha he's dead your hope isn't Mohammed he's dead your hope isn't Confucius he's dead but Jesus Jesus is alive, Amen. and He's alive forevermore. He came to set the captives free, but you're bound in your sins. People, all these people over here, you are bound in your sins. If you're walking hand in hand with a homosexual, and you say that's okay, you are guilty That's before right. God. That's right. You need to repent, and you need to plead to Jesus. You need to plead life for your friends. You need to tell your friends the truth, because the truth will set them free. You need to show them love, because we love our neighbors. We're out here to tell you of the damnation that's coming. Of the damnation the wrath of God that's coming to the to the child of disobedience. We got preachers. Anyone that's being disobedient to Jesus Christ, he's going to cast them in the lake of fire. Hell will be swallowed up and cast in the lake of fire. It's time to repent and get right with Jesus Christ. Open up your Bible. Read it, people. Read your Bible. And Enoch, also the seventh for man, and prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousand saints. What's he going to do when he comes with the ten thousand saints? He's going to execute Allah's judgment the upon God. all and to convince all the ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and all of their all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. 
These are murmurs complaining walkers after their own lust. And their mouth speaks great swelling words, having mixed persons in admiration because of advantage. Yes, they will take advantage of you. The devil comes as a, roar, a roaring lion, seeking those that he can devour. Yes. That's right. And he's coming to devour many people. Because people believe a big fat lie from the devil. That you can be in sin and serve Jesus Christ too. You're either in sin or in Christ. That's right, amen. You can't be in Christ and in sin. It makes absolutely no sense. People that speak this nonsense, they need to read their Bibles. Mm -hmm, that's right, preach. The Bible tells completely different. That's right. It's completely contrary. And first, Timothy 4, 4 1 says these words. Now the Spirit speaks expressively that in the latter times some showed apart from faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. These are seducing wicked spirits and doctrines of devils. There's many doctrines of devils. There's many That's people right. that That's lie right. that come out lights and oh yeah, you you can come to our church. You're just fine the way you are. Well, if you are in your sins, no, you're not. That's right. It doesn't matter if it's homosexuality, fornication, adultery. No, no, it doesn't matter any sin. But today we're here to call out homosexuals. That's right. Because this is what they call pride parade. They try to fly the rainbow flag. The rainbow was God's promise not to destroy the earth with water. That was his promise. But you know what he says in the New Testament? That he's going to destroy the earth with fire when he comes this time. And he said it'd be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It'd be like the days of Noah. People were eating, drinking, being merry. And he said it would be like the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, well, I find faith on earth. Heard picture, Lord. Could there be 20 million? They're in the faith. Or is it getting so bad? We know that the Bible says that it's going to wax worse and worse. Lord, we plead for these lost souls that they come to know you. And they get set free. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's the name. Yes. Above all names. Come on. That's the power. That's right. The power in the name of Jesus. That's right, brother. That power that can set a wicked man free. It set me free. The Lord Jesus Christ set me free of my porno watching, of my adultery, of my drunkenness, of my lying, my thieving, my covetousness. He set me free, and I'm free indeed. Hallelujah! And He can set you free. He can set you free of your wickedness of homosexuality because you are in bondage. You are in big trouble on Judgment Day. You're, on, you're in big trouble on Judgment Day when Jesus comes back. If you're in homosexuality, you need set free. We plead for you. We plead that you would come and know this Jesus Christ that we know. God bless you. Hallelujah.
I'm gonna let, we're going to let one of these guys over here preach. I'll give this back to you. If you'll hand me off the uh, microphone there, I'll let you get that. It's old. I was trying to keep it steady at the main part of your preach. He sets us free. We don't have to be in sin. We, we, he says, go sin no more. He bought me with his redeeming blood. All right, you Victory. people think we're preaching hate. You all say that we're supposed to be preaching love. If you understood the what the love that we have for you to come out here and warn you of your sins, for the Bible says that the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. Amen. And all the proud, yea, all that do wickedly shall be as stubble. That's right. We're Amen. here to warn you so that you won't be stubble. Preaching. Because the day will come. Amen. We all may live and die and go on, but that day is set. God Almighty has said it in His own appointed time that only the Father alone knows the day where He will judge the world in righteousness to this man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the Word of God in Jeremiah 20, 32, verse 17 says, Our Lord God, behold, Thou hast made the heaven and the earth by Thy great power, and hast stretched out Thy arm, and there is none too hard for Thee. Thou showest love and kindness unto thousands, and recompenses the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. Now the sad thing is, I see some of you parents out here walking with your children. Do you not know that God will recompense that evil upon your children? But we're coming out here to warn you, teach your children the ways of the Lord. For the day will come that burns as an oven. And the Bible says, for some of you are confused. Some of you say, oh, Jesus is just love, it's just all love. But do you know the image of Christ that says that Jesus Christ is coming back in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and who do not obey his gospel? And that's why crazy Amen. men and foolish men like us come out here and warn and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's salvation unto everyone that will believe, to the Jew first. And also to the Greek, we're preaching the gospel. Amen. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you were here and take heed and let your, let it sink into your hearts, you will be repent and you will be saved. That's right. But as I continue the yes. scripture, it says that the great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel and mighty in work. For thine eyes are open upon all the ways of the sons of men. To give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. For the Bible says that God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Not just the things we see you doing that we know full well are wicked and foul. The things that are done in your closet when no one is around. The things that are done when your friends, are, they're not on the phone with you, you're not texting them. The things that are done when you're by yourself in your room crying. Those things God will bring into judgment. And the sad thing is God, I'm sorry, the wonderful thing is, is that God will judge you according to his righteousness. And his Amen. All righteous. And the day yep. that he judge you, there will be no hiding. For the Bible says, Behold, I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the heaven and the earth fled away, for there was no place found for them. Everything in creation will run from the face of God. And the Bible says, I saw the dead, both small and great, stand before the white throne. Every last one of us out here will stand before this white throne. Amen. This throne of glory from the face of this one who the heaven and earth fled. It fled away because there was no place found for them. But we have to stand there because we have to give an account of every single deed done in the body, whether it be good or evil. And we're warning you that these deeds are evil. Some of you don't believe that these are evil. Some of you believe that you were born this way. Some of you know that they're evil, but you full well rebel against God. 
But we're letting you know that there is a standard and this standard is holy. And God will build this standard through his son. But we're preaching to you this the son of God, the one that can save your soul. Because the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, whosoever, whosoever, that's any one of you out here, if you believe, you will be saved. You will not perish, but you will have everlasting life. Yeah. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Please understand this. This is the condemnation. The light is coming to the world. But men love darkness because their deeds were evil. And everyone that does evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds shall be reproved. That's why many of you flick us off. That's why many of you throw cans out of your car. You don't like the light because your deeds are evil. But if you hear this gospel, this gospel can save you, not just from the penalty of hell, not just from the penalty of death, but from the sins themselves. You will begin to walk in righteousness. You will overcome those very wicked, vile deeds that you act in now. And that's the power of the gospel that's in this book. We're not preaching to you some false gospel that says God loves everything and God is fine with the way you are. Come as you are and stay as you are. No, that's of the devil. The Bible that we preach, the Bible that we preach, Jesus Christ saves you as you are, cleanses you, but now you're a new creature. And if you overhear that message, you can be saved. I heard about this in we're, we're calling you, begging you to repent, because it's God's commandment. God commands all men everywhere to repent because of the righteous judgment on that day, when he judged the world through his son, Jesus Christ. This... We hope you hear this call that's, for repentance. Okay. We yes. hope you hear this true call of love. But this out. is the I love of God. To so keep is. His Sarah commandments. Sarah Sorry, and we're preaching the commandments of God, commandments of God so that He gave through His Son, yes. Jesus Christ. For yeah, no, so this, this is, is the only righteous son. And we have to preach Him. But see, to you it's foolish. Because the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But we are to you not to perish. To come to the Son of God for salvation. And this salvation is open to all that will humble themselves and believe the gospel. This is the beautiful gospel. This is the love of God. But the love of God cleanses a filthy, vile man. And he no longer looks filthy. He's clean. How righteous would it be for me to take a filthy dog from outside? Say I've taken a stray dog. And just to bring the dog into my home without cleaning them up. I clean up the dog and I call on my own. That's what God does to filthy sinners. He cleanses them. No longer do we look filthy. If you take in a stray dog and you cleanse this dog and I was to come over, he would not look stray anymore. And this is the love of God that I preach. Please hear the call to repent. Repentance is this godly sorrow where gets repentance unto salvation. If you hear the call, I hope some of your hearts are broken over your sins. I hope some of your hearts are torn and you hear this call. Some of you here may call yourself saved. Some no, of you are we're not losers. We're church. winners for Jesus. Of course, your church is a preaching the gospel. Amen. For you will not winners for Jesus. Your wickedness. If your church was preaching the gospel, bless you with like the, the repenting Lord Jesus heart. Christ, like the Bible says Amen. in Jeremiah 23. If they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, help that young man, Lord, help him. Help him. Help him. Help him, Jesus. And you don't like it because you're in darkness. But if you just hear this gospel, and if you just hear this, the word of God, and you hear the name of God to be proclaimed, Jesus the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, the carpenter. But when you see him in the clouds, he won't have a hammer in his hand with nails. When you see the Son of God coming on the clouds, because you will, every eye shall see him. Yea, even they that pierce him. And all nations shall wail and mourn because of him. We're trying to get hey, you to come man. in now before that day. Because on that day, his fire will burn. And according to the Holy Scriptures, he will destroy sinners from off the land. Poor young people. And unless you hear this Lord, help them young you people. Turn from your sins, Lord, help them. Lord you will draw them young people out. The wrath of God, which is revealed from heaven. Draw them young the people out. And unrighteousness. And if you don't hear this call to repent, the Bible makes it clear. You will perish. You will lift up your eyes in hell. 
And according to the scripture, the man, the, the rich man that lifted up his eyes in hell, he was in torment. So that means that there's something taking place in that place. There's something taking place there that is suffering. And we're calling you not to go to that place. Every last one of you that are walking past me today, I don't care if you're 14, 18, 19, 45, you will die. Unless the Lord Jesus Christ come back, you will die. And if you die in the state that you're in, without repenting of your sins, turn it to the Lord Jesus Christ. For salvation, you will lift up your eyes in hell. And why go there and have this testimony? Oh God, I wish I would have listened. I wish I would have heard those crazy street preachers. Why, why suffer that torment? In the call to repent now. Call upon the name of Jesus Christ. It has saved the soul of everyone you see here, all of us preachers, and it can save your soul also. Because Jesus Christ died for the sins of the whole world. Come on. You are in the world, he died for your sins. If you hear this call to repent, you can be saved. You can be saved. Saved. Free. Not the false freedom that these false Christ churches teach. Free from sin. Not free to live how I want. Party and drink and go to gay pride. No, free from sin. And this penalty. That's the power of the gospel. Amen. He cleanses from the inside and out. Do not be caught on that day in your sin. That's what us crazy preachers are warning about. That's what you call us crazy. No, the message we preach is crazy to you because you're in darkness. But if you hear this call to repent, you can be saved. Listen to the gospel. Hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's salvation. It's the power of God. It's the power of God. God is powerful. You don't know it because you walk in your sins and you don't see people dying because of sin. Because of the mercy of God. For God is long-suffering. God is not willing that any man perish, but that all come to repentance. And that's why he set a day and where he will judge. But until that day, between now and that day, you have a possibility to be saved. Because the mercy of God is extended. But the day you die without with living in your sins and the day you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no more mercy for you. The only thing you can expect is the wrath of God. The judgment of God that says, Oh Lord, I, you taught in our streets. Oh Jesus, you hurt us. You love sinners. Jesus, you, you love the sinners. You were a friend of sinners. And when you hear this statement, depart from me, he that work iniquity. I know you not whence you are. Mm. Do not hear those words on your judgment. The day you stand before Jesus Christ, please don't be one who hears, I know you not whence you are. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Bind them hand and foot and cast them into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is a true judgment and we're warning you. We're warning you. We know the terror of God. And for us to know that terror, for us to know that fear, like Moses, we get on our faces and we cry out to God and he places his gospel in our hearts and we preach it. Lest every last one of you perish. Do not perish. Hear the gospel. Jesus Christ truly saves. Jesus Christ saves from sin and from his penalty. Do not suffer the wrath of God being in wickedness. Because it will lead you straight into the hands of an angry God. And I'm going to let you know now, you do not want to fall into the hands of an angry God. If you want to know what it's like to fall into the hands of an angry God, look at the cross. For God made him to be sin who knew no sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. So that's why, if you look at the cross, you see the wrath of God laid upon the body of the Son of God. That was supposed to be you. You, you, I see you looking at me. I don't know what you are, but a man or one. And you, he died for your sins. He placed them on the body of the one that is on the cross. And if you believe that gospel, you will be saved. Salvation is open to all that will believe. Believe in the Son of God. Receive the mercy of God. For the mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting to them that fear Him. Fear God. There's no fear of God here. Fear of God amongst us men, but there's no fear of God here. Had you fear God, the Bible says, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Had you fear God, you would be over here with us preaching the gospel. 
Hear the call of God to repent. Hear the call of God. Hear the mercy of God. Hear the true love of God. That says, come out. I will cleanse you. Believe on my son. If you believe in God, believe also in me, said the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a bold statement by a man. But this is just not no ordinary man. For this man dwelleth in a light that no man can approach. No man can approach this light. For he alone is light. For he is one with the Father. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three, they don't agree to be one. These three don't shake hands and say, okay, let's all be God. No, these three are one. And this is the God of the Bible we proclaim, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Israel. This is the great I Am. Who shall I tell him, send me, Lord? Said Moses. I am that I am. And you jump over to the book of John, and Jesus from his mouth says to the Pharisees, unless ye believe that I am he, you shall all likewise perish. For there's no salvation to the one who does not receive the Son of God as God. For the Son of God is God. That's what this book declares all through from Genesis to the book of Revelation. If you want to know who the Lord Jesus Christ is, go to the book of Revelation chapter 1, and let's read. Yeah. For Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation says, chapter 1, verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Jesus Christ is the Almighty God. Receive the Son of God. Man, I'm feeling <laughs> 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 Rich, brother. Glory to God.